Hey everybody, Juan here playing SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom Rehydrated. This game just came out for the PlayStation 4, Nintendo Switch, Xbox One, and PC. And this is a game that you may have played in the past because it does go all the way back to the PlayStation 2 generation. And as you can see, not only can you play as SpongeBob SquarePants, everybody's favorite sponge, you can play as Sandy Cheeks, one of my favorite characters in the series. Uh, same thing with, uh, you can play as Patrick Star. Each one has a distinctive uh, fight style, way of jumping around, but this is a platforming game. I, I would even go one step further and call it a collect-a-thon. Many of the objectives are based on, hey, go over there and fetch this, fetch that. So if you grew up playing games like that, this is going to be right up your alley, but the amount of charm, the amount of just uh, personality in this game is outstanding, and I really wanted to get my hands on this because I don't have that nostalgia factor for this game. I have nostalgia for Spongebob, right, as somebody that really did enjoy the series, but having not played this, I'm just thinking, well, is it worth playing now? So I thought, why not just go around for a little bit? One of my favorite things is that if you look on the upper left, you see underwear. So when I do this attack, notice I have another piece of underwear. Underwear is literally life in this game, people. That's uh, instead of hearts or anything like that, whether you play SpongeBob, Sandy, or Patrick, that is the thing that happens. When it comes to gameplay mechanics, when you press uh, X, at least on the Xbox, you have the, this uh, swipe attack. Anybody that played uh, or watched SpongeBob knows that this has to do with the jellyfish catching. If you press B, nothing happens when you're usually walking, but that can do a bit of a butt stomp. So if, uh, it may take you back to, to a character like Wario. If you press uh, X, then you do this uh, upward motion attack, but then you'll see other special things like this right here. You temporarily become a, a, a ball and you can go around way faster, but anything that attacks you is gonna immediately stop that. Now, taking you to this map here, you can get a good look at just all the different places that you can visit throughout the game. Any place you go so far really has just been, you get to meet a familiar character, like here you have Mrs. Puff. I forget if he has a driver's license still in this game or not. Probably not, maybe never. But then you do get to see other random characters, uh, some of them are voiced by the original voice actors, which is super nice. Others are not. Now, so far, that is the minority. So the staples like uh, Patrick, Sandy, SpongeBob, uh, Squidward, um, all of those do seem to be voiced by the original actors. And I'm a couple hours into the game so far. I'm just taking my time exploring around. Uh, as you can see, there is a uh, load times between the places. I think this is made using the Unreal Engine. Why, why is SpongeBob looking at me like that? You saw that when this first loaded, there was a bit of popping, so that is kind of a thing. Let me actually take you over to Mr. Krabs, one of the people that is not voice acted by the original actor. Your treasure chest's looking a bit light, boy. Do you think I've got bilge water on the brain? I ain't running a charity here. Yes, yeah, so you can see, uh, definitely not, not the same. No, not the same style. Uh, I do wish it was the original voice actor, but let's go over to Patrick. Did you find my lost socks? Not yet, Patrick. Oh, did they find you? I mean, they, they kind of found me. I love that even though you can't place Patrick, he is an option there. So let me just go here quickly. I think I'm actually missing. Yeah, I need one more golden spatula. So that's another thing that you get throughout the game. Uh, the golden spatulas are the equivalent of the stars in the Mario game, so the more that you get, the more different places you can actually reach and get to. Overall, I'm having a lot of fun with this game. Uh, for context, I was provided a review key, so thank you to, uh, so much to THQ Nordic for making that happen. Uh, let me take you in the SpongeBob building, in case you have not seen it in the video game. But um, if you're looking for like a challenge, right sometimes people go into these games and uh, it's really a test of patience not exactly the same case but you know donkey kong country can definitely get out there on difficulty uh, on difficulty depending on the game you play here it don't forget that this is a game originally made for kids so i think their main reason they remastered this game in 2020 was maybe for the sake of nostalgia like hey you can you can walk around bikini bottom 
That's exactly what I'm doing, and, I, and I'm loving it. I'm having a great time, and everything looks uh, beautifully sharp. If anything, this is one of my favorite things of modern generations. You know how some companies uh, just obsess over the highest possible quality of realistic graphics, but for me, I love games that really take advantage of something like this, that it's more about, hey, let's make something look a very cartoony, but look a lot like the television show. I think this reminds me for very different reasons, like the, the Dragon Ball Fighters, which is, even though it's 3D, they did a really good job of making it feel like the original animated show. Uh, this is one of the first areas that you go into the game, so I thought maybe it would be uh, the best place to show you just sort of how it is, and, and just look at their surroundings. And let me actually stay silent for a second so you can appreciate some of the music. Now that song does loop quite a bit. After a while in the, in the stage, I'm like, okay, can we get to like a, a, another part? Can we get a solo or something? It's not a bad song, but everything about this game just gives you the old school SpongeBob vibes. And uh, it does beg the question, which other games from that PS2, Xbox, GameCube generation uh, we should see come out in, in some way like this? You know, we've seen a Ty the Tasmanian Tiger come out recently. I've never played that, but that was a thing. Uh, Sphinx and the Cursed Mummy comes to mind. Another game that's out now on Nintendo Switch. So I, I think there, there is going to be this resurgence of platforming games in 2020 and beyond. And I think that without question... You have to get. You have to give credit to the Nintendo Switch. The fact that it's maybe not the most powerful console, and uh, for context, I'm not playing the Switch version. Once again, this is Xbox One, but I got a chance to to look at some gameplay from that version, and it looks good. I mean, let's be real. Visually, it's not going to look like this version, but this is not an incredibly demanding game. And I think uh, whether you get it on, on a place like the Epic Game Store on PC, on the PS4, Xbox One, Switch or something, you're going to have yourself a pretty good time. And I think a game like this also brings up the question of a video game difficulty that I mentioned. This is not super difficult, but you have a good time. I think that right now, with everything happening around the world, we kind of just need something that brings us back to the past and we can have some fun. We can catch some jellyfish. I, I tried to do uh, the the voiceover guy voice. Redundant, but I already said it uh, before I hit record, and it just doesn't work. But I, I really like that, even though it's a super just a fetch quest game, it does not hide that, right? If you're if you're nostalgic for not just SpongeBob, but that jank of that of that generation, you know what I'm talking about, right? Uh, the, the games that made that full 3D transition, especially on the PS2 GameCube generation, they were very literal about, hey, you're here, can you grab me 20 of these? This game is exactly that. At one point, one of the characters flat out told me not just what I needed, but exactly a step-by-step -step process was provided of what I needed to do to get there. So the game recognizes, look, this is maybe for kids as well. So we can't give people too much leeway. But uh, like Spyro, I just recently played the Reignited Trilogy. And this game also gives me some vibes of that where you look at this and it's just like, damn. I wish a lot more games took advantage of modern technology for this type of graphics, right? I don't care about the super realistic one. Uh, this is, uh, oh, this is the bungee jump part, right? Do I remember how to do it? Yeah, here we go. Oh, wait a minute. I got the 10th spatula. It was actually in the first stage. Okay. All right, people. Oh, yeah. Go SpongeBob. Go SpongeBob. I almost fell, but let's go with it. So going forward, uh, if you're watching this on the Player Juan Plays channel, this is going to be a channel where it's going to be exactly like this. It's going to be unedited uh, I, I want to take it back to old school YouTube for for these types of videos where I'm, I'm a human being playing video games let's talk about them far more than just being able to look at the gameplay 
Uh, I love to do discussion videos and reacting afterwards. As a matter of fact, uh, I do have the goal of uh, doing a review video or a video review, depending on how <laughs> you prefer to say that, uh, about this game. But I thought, why not just give my, my honest live reactions about it so far? And uh, considering that this is not a $60 game, which sometimes, you know, uh, you, you get these collections that are quite expensive. You you kind of have to compare this to the Crash Insane Trilogy and Spyro because even though those are PS1 games brought to PS4 and onward, this is a PS2 game. I think it scratches that same itch. And I think generally speaking, um, $30, which is the retail price for this, is pretty good. I think it is going to drop to like 20 bucks eventually. This game has an average beat time of about of about 10 hours. That was at least for the original version. So I suspect this is not going to be that much different. So it really depends on how much do you like SpongeBob? How much are you clamoring for some old school platforming goodness? And everything about this is just so vibrant. I think if there was one word... Wait a minute, can I get there? I think if there was one word to describe this game, there we go, it would be uh, vibrant. Because you look at this and you can't help but, but smile, right? And have yourself a, a pretty good time. So if there's any other game that is either from the PS2 generation brought to modern times or a game that inspires and reminds us of that, I think uh, a game like New Super Lucky's Tale is a pretty good example of that. If something like that comes to mind, Please go to the comments, whether you're watching and listening on, on Facebook or YouTube, and let me know. Because I think that in 2020, I'm kind of getting into a some genres that I've either never played before or am going back to. Platformers is something I've always loved, but I had a pretty bad habit of not finishing these games. So I think I'm just retaking these. But I'm also going back to like these original... Uh, Castlevania games right now I'm playing through Super Ca Super Castlevania 4 so I more, may work on a video about that just like me sitting down here playing it um, but uh, this is another character that I believe is not voiced by the original actor so let's just play this how about the rest of that pedicure now sir what are you talking about my feet are fine I believe the original voice actor passed away uh, somebody on the uh, a cast of the past discord brought that up which is unfortunate because these are iconic characters, but I wanted to close off by just showing the fact that this game does have... Uh, also, I just realized that's his tongue. Last time I thought that was a like a board or something. Now, ugh, my tongue hurts looking at that. <laughs> oh, man, but uh, people, that, that was a quick preview of SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom rehydrated once again at thirty dollars uh do i think it's worth getting if you're a big fan of old school platformers you're clamoring for that nostalgic feel and experience uh definitely if not it's probably going to drop for like uh 20 bucks at some point down the line if you're watching this on uh, youtube uh, please consider subscribing clicking on the bell maybe following my twitch channel at twitch.tv slash mr player juan I, I stream mainly on wednesdays and sundays and you can also like my Facebook page at facebook.com slash Player Juan. Or is it Mr. Player Juan? I should know this, people. It's going to be in the description. Thank you for watching and listening. Enjoy some sponge.